Joining us now, a reporter who's been on the front lines of this family separation story since it began, MSNBC's uh, Jacob Soboroff. And in Boston, physician and founder and CEO of the nonprofit Seed Global Health, Dr. Vanessa Carey. Good to have you both on board. Jacob, Thank you've you. been um, Thank you. trying to see uh, what you can see inside these, um, what, what will we call them, facilities? Yeah, detention centers. Detention centers. One detention center, one place they call a shelter. Look, I, I really just want to say, in all seriousness, normally I come on and we have a great time, but I, over the past few days, I just got back yesterday, I, I witnessed one of the most uh, despicable moments in modern American history. I saw kids locked in cages, sitting on floors, uh, supervised by security guard contractors in a watchtower uh, in McAllen, Texas. And I will never forget it. And uh, I don't think the American people should ever forget what happened, um, because this should never, ever uh, happen again. It's the worst thing that I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. Jacob, your reporting has been incredible. Try and take us in. in some, Laura Ingram has referred to them as boarding schools and, and summer camps, which is uh, disgusting. Despicable. Take us inside as much as you can as if we were there with you. It's just wildly inaccurate. You know, the first place I went was that former Walmart where kids are inside 22 hours a day, Donnie, and uh, they, they get outside for two hours a day. And that was luxurious compared to what I saw um, in McAllen. And I just wish that the first lady when she was there yesterday would have been able to go and actually see that facility, not the New Hope uh, shelter where kids are well taken care of. HHS, by all accounts, really kind of takes care of these kids. They're social service providers, um, and they that's what they do. But the Border Patrol station, uh, where we saw those cages, uh, is it is horrifying. It's, fi it's 55,000 square feet on one side of uh, parents and unaccompanied minors, and a huge number of those unaccompanied minors were taken away from their parents uh, and sitting there by themselves. And I... I uh, what happened to those kids? Where are they now? Some of the kids that I saw there, we, we literally just don't know where they are. Even the 500 that have been reunited, there's still 2,000 of them. And some of them may have been the kids that I saw and I, uh, I witnessed that day. Wow. Uh, Joe, jump in. Yeah, Jacob, talk about the access that reporters are able to get uh, to see these kids locked in cages. Or what, are, what, what are reporters allowed to see? What are you kept away from? It's virtually, Joe, it's virtually non existent as far as uh, access. And I'm just lucky that I was able to actually uh, get into that facility. And I think that the only reason that I got the call on Saturday. Uh, you know, and I left Saturday night at midnight, slept on the floor of the Dallas airport to rush to get there on Sunday morning on Father's Day. I left my own Father's Day um, to get there is because DHS wanted us to get in that facility before the Democrats got in that facility. And they expected this huge um, backlash, obviously, a barrage of attacks against the administration when the CODEL um, went in there on Monday morning. Wow. And so I, that's the only reason, in my personal opinion, that we got let inside um, this facility. No other uh, journalists, no other people were actually allowed to lay eyes uh, on that group of kids other than, other than the group that I went in there with. So uh, Dr. Vanessa Carey, um, Seed Global Health uh, works on training doctors around the world so that they can deal with their own humanitarian crises and epidemics and develop. Um, and yet you want to lend your vo voice to this one. You reached out to us. Uh, we've, we've loved working with you on SEED. But tell us what is striking you and what is striking so close to home for you as a doctor in terms of this separation story. Uh, it's a couple things. You know, I'm a physician. <coughs> I'm also a mother. And I, you know, when I've been holding my own children so tightly over the last week, thinking about the anguish, not only that the parents are going through, but what these kids are going through. There are years and years of data that show what the psychological, physical, and lasting impacts of separation of children from their families is. Even if these families get reunited, these kids are going to be suffering a lifetime of effects from this. And we are just creating a vicious cycle. You know, as we are sitting here having this debate, thousands of children and families are still being traumatized. This has been one of the most egregious exploitations mm -hmm. of a human rights issue for political purposes that this administration has done. And it is just morally indecent and unacceptable. I'm watching this country go back to its darkest days. As a physician, my job is to nurture and heal my patients. But as a mother, my job is to nurture and protect my children. And part of that means also showing them what it means to be yeah. a global citizen and part of the world that we will not only give to, but that we benefit from. And this just hits me in the deepest core of anything. Joe. 
Yeah, um, I, Jacob, um, tell me, uh, you, you, when you were describing what was going on, tell me um, about the people that are taking care of the kids. Uh, were you able to talk to uh, the border uh, agents? Uh, it's obviously, they're, they're being put in an extremely, extremely difficult position right now because of the policy. What can you tell us about that? You make a really good point, Joe, is that these Border Patrol agents, many of them are parents themselves. I think 50% of them are Latino, uh, actually, uh, themselves. And I was told inside that facility uh, that they, were, they didn't have the manpower. They were overloaded. They were stretched in. The system was wearing thin, even if they had supported the policy. And so when I was in there that day, when the policy was still in effect, there were only four uh, social workers that were contractors outside this pen, basically, this cage where the little kids were. And the Border Patrol agents themselves are not so licensed social care workers. So even though that facility is only supposed to hold these families and kids for 72 hours, um, the kids could ultimately be left in there for up to 24 hours alone when HHS is supposed to come and pick them up. And the Border Patrol agents weren't even allowed to touch them, um, not pick them up or you know, change a diaper or whatever the case may be. And they were relying on four social mm -hmm. care workers uh, for, for conceivably what could have been uh, hundreds of kids. And uh, it was, it's just a manpower issue. Uh, and then also a, a human issue, like you're alluding to. These are, these are real people, too, that have to go out and execute their operators the policies of Donald Trump uh, in Washington, D.C., on the ground. So, Vanessa, what's your general assessment? Obviously, you haven't treated uh, any of these kids or, or worked for, firsthand with them of what the impact could be on them, the lasting impact of being taken away from your mother. Because, as you point out, even a very young child is painfully aware of what's happening in that moment. Yeah. So, I mean, through the work I've done overseas and through Seed Global Health, I've spent a lot of time working with families that have endured trauma, one form or another, whether it is just abject poverty or if it is, you know, very directly having experienced a trauma. And, um, you know, it, it has very lasting impacts for children in terms of mental health, depression, uh, physical implications, increased cardiovascular disease, hormonal changes. Um, it, there's lasting effects. But when we, we also know through research that children who are separated from their families are more likely to live in poverty in the future, to have um, social behavioral disturbances. So when we're talking about, you know, what we're, we're effectively damaging a generation for years to come, and that's going to be on us. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, Dr. Vanessa Carey, um, we really appreciate your voice uh, on many levels on this. And Jacob Soboroff, thank you for your reporting. Um, work, really appreciate can, it. Can I just ask Jacob one last question? Do we have time? Just, uh, I just, I just, it, it seems to me, Joe raised this yesterday, it still continues to really trouble me that although there have been some uh, pre-approved pictures given in some of these cases you were allowed to get into access, that there are not cameras that have been allowed to shoot real footage no. in, in, in places even that you have toured, and then there are other places that there are still no cameras, right. no pictures that have come out. W what do you think is a practical matter can be done by the profession right now to try to get the kind of accountability that Americans you deserve because we are paying for those facilities? Well, I'll give you one example. They sent out a couple days ago photos of girls and tender age children, as they're calling them, uh, facilities in Virginia and I think in Homestead. Florida, where there is a tour today at 9 o'clock in the morning, and I refuse. I'm not going to share those pictures until someone actually gets eyes on the facility itself. I don't think it's appropriate for any of us as journalists or citizens to talk about um, photos from inside those facilities handed out by the government. That's propaganda handed out by the government until we're allowed to lay our own eyes on them. So if we're not allowed to bring our own cameras, cameras in, yeah, yeah. if we're not allowed to bring our own cameras in, at least we have to be able to get in to see um, and give our version it's of, this, like of the photos that they're giving out. It's like they're releasing hostage video. It's incredible, it is. and well, it's where we're at, Joe. Yeah, and, and uh, again, it's something that I wrote in the Post this morning, talking about this situation, <clears throat> a conservative former intelligence operative grimly recounted to me on Thursday how much the handling of these displaced children reminded him of the CIA facilities where mm -hmm. terrorists yes. were secretly held and interrogated yes. after September 11th. Quote, this reminds me of our black sites, except we were holding 100 or so adult terrorists for the killing of American citizens. Now 2,300 kids are held in unknown locations with unknown individuals inside and absolutely no outside observation. 
This is happening in America, and that statement came from a top Intel official, a, a hardened conservative who believed you had to do what you had to do to get information from terrorists who finds what is happening this week absolutely despicable and un-American. And, and this is, they are treating these children's sites like black sites. You're right, Jeff. The press should be able yeah. to get in there. And uh, we, we, don't, we, we don't need to get propaganda from the federal government. Donald Trump's centralized state right now has thrown infants and toddlers and babies inside facilities, and they're not letting us see inside of there. So uh, Mike Pence, Pompeo, Mattis, uh, these are people that we know know this is wrong. Uh, the DHS Secretary, Kristen Nielsen, uh, that remains to be seen. Um, this is a presidency that is rotten at the top. Um, and we all have to try and call it out. What's happening here is un-American. We'll be watching Jacob's Dateline Special Report, The Dividing Line, 7 o'clock Eastern on Sunday night, right here on NBC. On, on NBC. Uh, up next, New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio joins us after the federal government used the cover of darkness to drop off more than 200 separated migrant kids in his city. We are talking about America. We're back in a moment. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.